Okay, so we got from here, okay, then we've got the derivative, which is here. Okay, so I'm gonna draw it a bit bigger because this one needs some um, concentration involved. Okay, sorry that my lines are not that straight. Okay, now, intuitively, when we look at it, if we're given a curve as single variable, y equals to x, uh, sorry, 2x squared plus something like that, okay, then we differentiate that, right? Uh, the, that would give us the gradient of the tangent. Now, if we were to parallel that with this, it would seem that we will get the tangent vector at the curve, okay? Let's think about it, the tangent vector at the curve. So the curve is going one way, that means that when we differentiate this, we put the value of t inside that point, it will be a point on the curve, and then this one will give us the tangent vector. So I will notice again that from here to here, we get it's two vectors. So the position vector, then we go to the tangent vector, okay? Now, how are we gonna show that? Well, let's see whether we can make some sense out of it, okay? It's gonna, the method's gonna be quite close to the, the normal var uh, single variable calculus. So uh, hopefully, if you know that one, you might know what's going on here. Let's just draw the curve as like that. Okay, I don't know what the curve is, but I'm gonna draw it big so we know. Okay, now I'm gonna draw the vector here like this. Okay. Now, as opposed to you know just the same method, we let um x sorry function x and then we let um x plus change in x. We're gonna have to define this as a position vector. Okay, of um, f and let's just put it as t zero. It's just a certain point here. Okay, so. For single variable calculus, we, we put a change in x. It only seems right that for this one, we put a change in t. A small change in t. Okay, that doesn't look that small, but never mind. Okay. Which will go as vector function f, and the parameter is t0 plus small change in t. Okay, so we've got two of the position factors here. Then now we're gonna, by the parallelogram law, we're gonna find the vector from here to here. Because, you know, if we can anticipate what's gonna go on next, you know, as this goes closer to here, that vector will slowly become the tangent vector of the point at the curve over here. So we will just uh, draw this vector over here. Okay, like I say, sometimes I wish I can draw uh, uh, more straight lines. Okay, and this would be you might have guessed it, plus change in t minus vector function f t naught, t zero. Okay, yeah, so well, we minus off, we go back here, we go here to get that to there. That's good so far, right? Okay, so now we need to somehow uh, write this vector in another form so that, you know, we can see when the, the vector tends to, as we take the limit, our uh, change in t tends towards zero, just like how we take change in x tends towards zero. Well, uh, we can write that, but um, you know, using another way, I'm going to write this. Change in t. Uh, I put a bracket here. Okay, well, why do I want to do that? Because um, I'm going to divide it by a change in t, but this is still the same vector as this. Do you notice that? Why? Because if two vectors are scalar multiples of each other, it goes in the same direction. So it, yeah, so it goes into the same direction. That is okay. So this is the same thing as this. But you know, later when we if we want to write this in its in, in, in full form, which I want to write again, okay? So it's gonna take me a while, but I'll write as fast as I can. Should I write it here just now? Uh, T T naught, okay, close bracket. We're gonna now write the individual components and then we're gonna divide it by this one over here, which is gonna be t naught plus change in t, take away function of x t naught, um, change in t, i component plus the y component, sorry, the, the function of y, that will be the j component and the z component over here. Okay. Mm, if you all can't see because the camera cuts it off, uh, you, you, you know what it is. Okay. Okay, so now we're gonna let change in t as 
KGT tends towards zero. Okay? Now this, now we have to evaluate the left and the right, okay? But this is best evaluated with uh, a geometric interpretation similar to the one that you normally get for your uh, y equals to x calculus um, by first principles. Uh, t tends towards zero, as t tends towards zero, this will tend towards this. So as this tends towards this, the vector will get closer over here. So, smaller and smaller, right? Smaller, smaller and smaller. And then this vector over here, which is going to be the same vector as here, it's just that it's a different magnitude, but the direction is the same, will tend towards the tangent. See that? It goes from here to here, then it will tend towards the tangent there. So this will tend towards the tangent, which we will just write as like that. If, yeah. And then for this, we don't really need a graphical representation because if we use the differenti uh, differentiating by first principles, we will automatically know that this will equal to this. Okay, yep, that looks great. So this is the end result that we were we had in the beginning. And the meaning of this is that this left hand side goes towards the tangent vector and this by algebra it goes towards the the um this equation over here. So it's not algebra, it's the differential differentiating by first principles. Um I don't have a check on it, maybe I'll just do a quick one, but then uh, if you want you can go check it out in a high school math textbook. So there we go. A nice way to kind of relate uh, geometric properties, uh, first principles, uh, and some algebra here, and to get this. So right now we just know that differentiate the position vector is differentiating each of the components. Uh, it's only possible, or we can only evaluate at points which are continuous. Okay, and uh, there we go. The interpretation of this is the uh, tangent vector to that point on the curve. That's all.